Hey folks, I just installed this Pioneer EcoAsis 150 energy recovery ventilator. I've still got another one to install, so I'm going to show you the installation with some things that I've learned from when I did the first one. Here's the second one. These things are set up so that you could either come out the side, I guess you would mount them so that the side of the unit is up against the wall, or come out of the back. I'm doing the back type mount. So you just take these caps that they give you and just uh, pop them into place and they blank off the uh, these open holes. Looks like that when it's done. Here's some parts they come with. These are the outdoor rain hoods, intake and exhaust vents, flanges that fit onto the back plate, a couple of gaskets for weather sealing, and these are the pipes that join the intake valves and the rain hoods with the uh, interior flange. You also get uh, some seals that get pasted onto the back of the unit before you hang it on the wall. You get a remote control. Got some uh, wall anchors here, which I'm not going to use because I've already got plywood embedded in the wall to support that thing. These units are designed with an electrical cord that comes out of the bottom attached to a plug that you just plug into the wall. But I've cut this off because I'm going to do this a different way. Inside the unit, I'm going to connect this wire to a hard wire that I've got coming from the wall. It'll be powered from this uh, toggle type uh, light switch type thing, which my electrical inspector says uh, is okay. See, I've done a little bit of work on this thing already here. Since I'm using the back, there's a styrofoam insert here that uh, you cut out with the utility knife. Also, I've drilled that hole that I'm gonna be using for the uh, electrical cord. And also, uh, in the back plate, I've cut this out so it'll accept that electrical uh, cord coming through. Here you can see on the first one what that electrical looks like. There's the hole, there's the cord, the new power cord coming through the hole. There's the cord that comes with the unit and the two of them are just joined together using these uh, quick type uh, disconnects. Here you can see I've already got the back plate temporarily mounted to the wall. If you're working by yourself, I find the best way to do this is to uh, make a little mark showing where the bottom of the plate is. Remember the bottom of the plate is going to be a half inch above the actual bottom of the unit. And then marking it horizontally with the distance from the wall. Put in one screw and then uh, when that screw is set, you kind of use that as a pivot point. Grab your level. Put it up here, make sure that it's level and plumb, then drill the second one, and then uh, screw in the others. The installation requires that you drill two four-inch diameter holes in the wall, one here and one here. See, I've marked them using these pinholes here as a means to find the center of the hole. Very important. I, I found from the first installation that instead of taking the drill and drilling a single hole through the wall, it's uh, not gonna uh, align perfectly inside to outside. The best way to do it is to first drill the interior hole, and then once that's done, look inside the hole, mark the inside of the wall, drill a pilot hole, and then go to the outside of the building and drill the second hole from the outside. Uh, here you can see I've taken off the back plate lightly marked on the walls where the four inch opening is gonna go and extended these lines so they go about half inch beyond the hole. I'll explain why a little bit later. You can see I've started uh, drilling the holes here. I'm, uh, I'm through the, uh, the chip board and the plywood and the mineral wool insulation. And I'm just getting into that spray foam insulation I'm going to remove that uh, arbor bit from the middle of the drill so I don't punch a hole through the outside paneling. Just cut a hole in the spray foam insulation. I'll show you why. 
Okay, so now I've cut through the spray foam insulation and I'm looking at the inside surface of that exterior 3 8 inch thick paneling. This is a very thin wall. It's only about, you know, four and a half inches total thickness. It's a shed to house conversion, which is one of the reasons why I bought this unit here. It allows you to go through a wall that's that thin. Uh, a lot of the other ERV units, you got to use like a seven or eight inch wall minimum, either that or or fur out the inside in order to increase the thickness of the wall to allow you to mount the thing, which I didn't want to do. So here you see I've applied some masking tape to the wall. That's the reason why these marks here were extended before drilling the hole. I lined the tape on those marks going both ways. And this point right here then marks the exact center of the hole. Now I can start to mark out on that exterior panel where I want that hole to go. The reason I didn't want to use the bit in the middle of the drill arbor to drill a hole in the outside panel is because the new hole is only going to be about an eighth of an inch below that, seeing as how the slope, quarter inch per foot, at you know roughly half a foot wall thickness is only going to be about an eighth inch drop. And the two holes being eighth inch apart would just kind of blend into each other. There's a couple different ways to do this. I mean, you could you could use a square, kind of put it in the hole, and uh, set it up against that outside sheathing. One of the things I like to do, I find it very accurate, is to take this little drill bit guide and just set it up against the the jip board like that just kind of settle the, the drill bit right into place in that little crook. And then I just push on it and twist the drill bit a little bit, make a little mark in the uh, in that fabric on the inside. And that allows me to uh, set the location of the new hole that's going beside it. So here you see uh, inside I put a little crossing mark there where that pinhole from my drill bit went and then I just sort of eyeballed it about a eighth of an inch below that and drew another line and then at that new crossing that's where I'm going to drill a hole through to the uh, to the exterior. I have a set of these uh, extra long small diameter drill bits and I'm going to use one of these and drill a smaller hole because it allows me to more accurately pinpoint the uh, location of the of the opening that I'm drilling. And there you can see I've drilled a little pinhole, little pilot hole for the outside cutout. And that should just give me about a perfect alignment for the outside and the inside cutout holes. Okay, now that the holes are drilled and uh, the outer holes marked, we can finish assembling the back plate by taking these flanges and fastening them to the back of the plate using these tiny little nuts and bolts that they provide. Be real careful, don't lose any of them. If you're missing any, try looking in the bag of, uh, of parts. Sometimes they stick to the adhesive of these uh, press-on rings. I found the easiest way to do this is to lay it flat. Take the nut and set it in that little hexagonal shaped indentation in the top of the flange. And then take a screwdriver with the bolt and just push it in from underneath and thread it into place. And it's best to hold the nut in place with your with your thumb from above while you're doing that. And it should look like that when you're done. Now I've put the mounting plate back on the wall with those five screws and added a little duct tape to protect the wire from the sharp edges of the metal. I'm not too worried about the drill bit coming in and hitting these flanges. 
as I drill from the other side. They're, they're pretty far away from the outside wall. Now I'll start assembling the outside parts. These, uh, these rain hoods, they just press right on to the intake and the uh, exhaust vent. The little, little key there in the, in the rain hood fits into that little tab on the, uh, on the vents. Next, I'm gonna cut these pipes to length. They also just, you see, slide right onto these finished assemblies and just push fit around those little ribs there. I know from experience that these are about three and a quarter inches. You can try and measure it, but it's really hard to, to get it right without actually doing an actual fit. I would say measure it, leave them a little bit long and then uh, try a dry fit from the outside and say before you put the boots on, just with the uh, rain cap and vent and the pipe assembled, push it through from the outside, fit it on to that flange and uh, see where it sets. I like to set it so that this line right here, which is where the boot comes to, is set back inside the wall, maybe just about an eighth of an inch uh, or a quarter inch. What that allows you to do is it, it kind of leaves a gap all around this thing that you can put sealant in after the thing's been installed. These pipes are really kind of lightweight and hard to cut straight. I have a table saw, so that's how I'm going to do it, although I will make to make two passes because the blade's not high enough to come through the pipe the whole way. However you do it, just make sure and cut them straight as you can. There's the cut pieces just like that. And it's easy when you have the right tools. It takes a little bit of doing, but just by kind of working this thing back and forth, you can get it to fit on here around all of these ribs. See, they push on all the way. It's just a friction fit, but you could probably still take them off if you need to, if you want to like uh, cut, the, cut the end of the pipe back uh, a tiny bit more. It's not really apparent from the instructions. In fact, the only place I could see was on the outside of the box where it tells you which opening is the outside air intake and which one's the exhaust air. So I marked them on the plate there, outside air intake and exhaust air. And then also marked it on these, just so when I'm outside fitting them in, I know which one goes where. These rubber gaskets slide on just like this and come up to right here. And once they're on, they're fastened in place with these included set screws. You just drill a hole here and screw right through the rubber into the plastic and another one up at the top. But like I said, I'm gonna leave these off until I do a test fit of these rain hoods and outlet valves right there in the opening. Okay, so that's the end of part one and you can tune in to part two to see how we get from where we left off to the finished installation like this. See you there.